Welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about points and text. So, uh, like always, we need to start with a sketch. We're going to hold Shift and S, and it's going to ask us for a uh, sketch plane. So let's start on the top plane. Letter P to hide the planes. Letter N to normalize our view. Um, so if we look over here, we've talked about all of these so far. Like we said, we're going to talk about points and text, which are our next deals on our toolbar. Um, but to kind of show you how points work, we're going to start with some lines. So I'm going to have a line just drawn there, uh, a random rectangle, throw a circle out here. Uh, we can put an arc here as well. And let's throw a polygon right in the center just so we have some stuff to play with. Oh. Polygon in the center. There we go. All right. So we have a couple of different shapes and things we can draw and add points to. Um, most of the time you have your snap. So if I'm going to start another line and I want to draw a line from this line, you'll see it'll automatically want to auto configure to that center of that line, right? Well, down here on my rectangle, it'll do it on my midpoints. Well, what if you want a point and you want to add a line somewhere that's not on the most vertical point from your center of your circle or your midpoint or right in the center or whatever, right? But if you want to point somewhere and then you want to define it later, right? How do I find the midpoint of this uh, arc down here? Obviously, it's going to give it to me, but maybe I want it a quarter of the way through that, you know, half of that midpoint. So I'm going to place one here and you just click on your lines. You can just tell it wherever you want it. You can click out into space and then you would obviously go back and give it dimensions. But basically you're just anywhere you would like a point in relation to a certain shape, you're going to click. So if I want one, I'm going to zoom in on this, this uh, hexagon right here. I want one about here. I can put one there. If I want one on my dotted reference plane, I can, or reference circle, I can put one there as well. So pretty self-explanatory, a point, wherever you click, point and click, and a point will go there. Fairly simple, um, but it's a tool that not a lot of people really use too often, and there's times where you end up drawing lines and having to trim them up anyways. So if you can just add the point, because that's all you're really looking for, uh, might as well just draw one thing instead of drawing three or four and having to delete them anyways. So let's delete all those um, and moving on to our next one, which most people are looking forward to is our text feature. So fairly simple, click the box. Um, and I'm going to click anywhere, um, but for this, I'm gonna click on my origin. Once I click once, you will see I have a rectangle selection box. So just like if we were doing a two point rectangle or a corner rectangle, I click a point, and then I click my other corner. So one corner and then the other corner. Then it'll bring up this window. Um, so we're gonna write a name. Uh, I'm gonna write my name in all caps. And you will see I have a bunch of different drop downs of different text types I can do. Alerta, it'll change the font. Alerta stencil, uh, you go down if there's a specific font you like. It doesn't have every font. That's one of the hard parts, but um, we'll go ahead and pick that one. I can make things bold if I click the B. If I need it mirrored for whatever reason, it will do that. If I want it flipped horizontal, um, depending on what program or project you're doing, you might need it. Things to note, you only have 250 characters per text box. So if you're doing something that has a lot of text, do multiple text boxes. Um, if you're doing like a lot of different names, I've done nameplates before and I like to have each uh, name first and last be a different text box. So it's easier to edit and move around. And uh, we just got doing room numbers for the school and I did these with text and I was able to make each individual letter and or number its own text box, which allowed me to change it for each different room. So we're going to go ahead and click just as is. And you'll see it makes it very, very big so just based off of how i measured that or i i drew that box um this is going to be 57.238 inches um long so obviously i'm not going to make that that big uh, so i'd want to scale it down things to note when you're scaling this 
is you can only dimension one side. So if I want to say, hey, I need this to be 10 inches tall, I'm not allowed to come and then make this 30 inches wide because it's trying to keep that scale together, right? I can pick one or the other. So if I want it to be 30 inches wide, I can make it that 30, but I can't also then make it 10 inches tall. It's stuck. It's locked in place. It has to be scaled according to. So if you want to, I know in some other drafting programs, if you want to scale the height, you're allowed to. Um, that doesn't really exist in this program. Um, so keep that in mind when you're doing text. If you want something that's a little bit taller of a font, draw it in another program and then bring it in. You can trace it around. I'll show you guys a video on how to do that later. Um, but for the meantime on here, if I wanted to make this into a sign, we'll just draw a rectangle around it really quick. I have that center point and we'll make this into a sign. Give it some dimensions. We'll put two inch spacing around everything really quick. And I have a nice simple sign that I can go cut out uh, on my plasma table on, uh, I can do it with the router, kind of however you're gonna do this thing. Uh, you'll see real quick. I have my sign. Some things to note um, when you're using the text feature. So we're gonna make this thing 3D really quick, just so you can take a look by pressing Shift and E. And I'll have more videos on how to actually make things 3D uh, later on once we get through all the text tools. But you'll see um, any letters in the alphabet that have holes or like either lowercase, capital, mostly they're capital letters, but like A, um, R, Q, P, O, I'm just looking at the keyboard right now. Um, some lowercase letters, B, capital B, lowercase B. Uh, numbers, you know, four, six, eight, nine, zero. Any combination of those, you're going to end up with something like this where they fall out. And so what we do in the, in the plasma cutting world is you have to add what are called breaks. Um, the real easy quick fix is if I go back to my sketch, normalize that view right click on it edit text and just change it to that alert a stencil that's the only one they have right now that is a tent a stencil font um, i'm hoping they'll add some more fonts later or they'll make it to where you can add your own fonts um, but as of now alert a stencil is the only one so if i'm making something really quick this is what i do and you'll see that i have those breaks added there now. So I can still read the letter A and there's not a hole cutting out. The only thing I don't like about this Alerta stencil font is that it adds that stencil to things that don't need to be. I mean, the M is fine, the E is fine, the S is fine. We saw before we did this, everything was okay. The only things that were gonna fall out were the A's. Um, all those letters typically wouldn't have breaks through them. So it is a little overkill. Um, if you're doing plasma, it's a lot of pierces. So um, one, two, three, four, five. It's adding probably another 10 or 15 pierces that do not need to be there. So um, just keep that in mind when you use this. Although if you're trying to do quick, it's there. Very, very simple. Uh, we'll go back to our main sketch again. I'm going to draw just another text box just to show you one more time. Remember, click two points, type whatever you want to type. And um, be sure to only scale one side or one dimension, length or height. So if I want this to be four inches tall, I can do that. But again, remember, I cannot make this then 20 inches wide because it doesn't like it. So pick one or the other. If I want it 20 inches wide, I have to then delete that four inch measurement and then it will scale down accordingly. Okay. Um, that's it for today.
next week we'll be looking at how we, how to use the use feature intersections as well as construction lines um, and the intersection feature so uh, if you have any questions feel free to put something in the comment below uh, I'm really liking that you guys are, are watching all these it looks like in the last couple days um, leading up to school coming back in a lot of people are trying to brush back up on how to use this program so um, feel free to reach out uh, in the comments like I said or even if you have any questions uh, send me a message directly Instagram whatever I'll be more than willing to help you out um, again thanks for watching see you later